Grace and peace to you, friends, and welcome to worship with First Presbyterian Church of Warren. In our passage in the Gospel of Matthew today, a messenger appears as a sign from God, heralding a new era. In the passage, the words, do not be afraid, appear, offering a clue that the messenger was referencing something that induced fear in the recipient, a new way of being together of relating and loving takes courage, eschewing the present order of things so that a new and better day can be born. Adam, I invite you to play the Advent music. Thank you. 
Today we say, I believe in love even when I don't feel it. Let us pray. Holy One, we thank you for the glimpses we catch of your gift of daring love, even in the midst of fear, of challenge, of struggle, even when we cannot yet see a better day, when we will act like the human family we are, ignite the flame of love within us, that we might glow with its brilliance from the inside out. I believe in love, even when I don't feel it. Help us face this fear of difference and dare to see what love can do. Amen. Friends, if you have an Advent wreath or candle at home, I'd invite you to light them now. Our opening hymn is Lift Up Your Heads, Ye Mighty Gates. Friends, I'd invite you to share a sign of peace with one another and may the peace of Christ be with you all. You can unmute yourself or share in the chat or share in the comments on Facebook. Peace, That's peace with you. Peace to all. Peace, everybody. Peace. Good to see you peace this morning. Peace. Every, God's peace to everyone. God's peace. Yes, and peace now, to everybody. Peace. Peace. Good morning. Peace. Good morning, everybody. I'd like to invite any um, children that are close by to come forward or any children who children in their hearts um, today. Well, there are a lot of different Christmas traditions that are in each family and also around the world. There's a lot of different Christmas traditions around the world. This morning, I learned that in New Zealand, the Christmas tree is called the Pohutu Kawa, Pohutu Kawa. I can't even say that. And since it's summer right now in New Zealand, it, they don't really have evergreen. So they have this Pohutu Kawa tree, which is, um, has bright red blooms in December. So all around the world, there's different Christmas traditions. And one of our traditions is having an advent wreath. And Advent wreaths came from Germany. Even before Christians were around in Germany, they had um, wreaths that were on fire sometimes, <laughs> that they set on fire as part of their tradition. And so Christians kind of adopted this tradition in the 1500s. For us, for Christians, the symbol of the Advent wreath means it's in a circle. So it means that there's no end and it's evergreen. The four candles, which are often blue or dark purple, it represents the darkness in the world or that things aren't always right. It represents that things aren't always right. 
And then we have the Christ candle, the big white candle in the middle, um, and the lights represent the light of the world. So our Advent wreath is one of our traditions that we have. And I think it's pretty special. So we decided to have, uh, since everyone can't be here, um, a number of you made your own Advent wreath at home, which is so awesome. And you sent in some pictures of your Advent wreath for our Advent wreath competition. So here are the results and the winners of our Advent wreath competition. Adam, can you roll the video? So thank you everybody for sending in those amazing Advent wreaths. We'll post that video on our Facebook page and our website so you can see it later on. There we go. <laughs> we had some echo going on, uh, but we will post it later on so you can see it. And next week, if you are in worship, if you stay after worship, we're gonna uh, have our own hanging of the greens type time and fellowship. And you could show us around your house. You can send in pictures so I can show it on Zoom. But if you wanna uh, show us around your house, if you're on Zoom so we can see all the Christmas decorations, that would be amazing. So let us pray and give thanks to God. Holy God, we give you thanks for all these different Christmas traditions that help us celebrate the season, that help us celebrate and remember your coming into the world as God with us, as Jesus. We thank you for this in his name. Amen. As we said last week, our worship series this Advent calls on the power of music that has always called humanity to a brighter tomorrow. Rather than turn away from music in sorrow, we will turn toward the story of music and deepen our appreciation of its role in healing, change, and reconciliation. Indeed, on this Sunday with love at the center, we can attest that probably love songs top the charts in the history of human song. This week, Renee shares the theme, of, theme song of our series, I Believe Even When, with the words, I believe in love.
Okay, I think we're having some technical difficulties. I'm gonna post that video on our YouTube, on our Facebook and our website so we can hear Renee's beautiful, beautiful voice and the beautiful song. Our gospel reading this morning is from Matthew, uh, the first chapter, the very beginning, one to 25. Last week we read the beginning of the gospel of Mark and this week we turn to Matthew. A record of the ancestors of Jesus Christ, son of God, son of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac. Isaac was the father of Jacob. Jacob was the father of Judah and his brothers. Judah was the father of Perez and Zerah, whose mother was Tamar. Perez was the father of Hezron. Hezron was the father of Aram. Aram was the father of Amminadab. Uh -oh. Amminadab was the father of Nashon. Nashon was the father of Salmon. Salmon was the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Boaz was the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. Obed was the father of Jesse. Jesse was the father of David, the king. David was the father of Solomon, whose mother had been the wife of Uriah. Solomon was the father of Rehoboam. Rehoboam was the father of Abijah. Abijah was the father of Asaph. Asaph was the father of Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat was the father of Joram. Joram was the father of Uzziah. Uzziah was the father of Jotham. Jotham was the father of Ahaz. Ahaz was the father of Hezekiah. Hezekiah was the father of Manasseh. Manasseh was the father of Amos. Amos was the father of Josiah. Josiah was the father of Jeconiah and his brothers. This was the time of the exile to Babylon. After the exile to Babylon, Jeconiah was the father of Shealtiel. Shealtiel was the father of Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel was the father of, of Abiud. Abiud was the father of Eliakim. Eliakim was the father of Azor. Azor was the father of Zadok. Zadok was the father of Achan. Achan was the father of Eliud. Eliud was the father of Eleazar. Eleazar was the father of Nathan. Nathan was the father of Jacob. Jacob was the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom Jesus was born, who is called the Christ. So there were 14 generations from Abraham to David, 14 generations from David to the exile to Babylon, and 14 generations from the exile to Babylon to the Christ. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ took place. When Mary, his mother, was engaged to Joseph before they were married, she became pregnant by the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, was the righteous man. Because he didn't want to humiliate her, he decided to call off their engagement quietly. As he was thinking about this, an angel from the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife, because the child she carries was conceived by the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and he will call him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Now all of this took place so that what the Lord had spoken through the prophet would be fulfilled. Look, a virgin will become pregnant and give birth to a son, 
and they will call him Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did just as an angel from God commanded and took Mary as his wife, but he didn't have sexual relations with her until she gave birth to a son and Joseph called him Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In all the romanticization of Christmas, the beautiful crushes, the glorious songs and carols, the art throughout history and our Christmas cards, in all of that, we often forget that Mary and Joseph were real people with real lives and real relationships dealing with real challenges in the real world. We can hear this familiar story from the Gospel of Matthew and brush over it. But if we lean in a little closer, we can hear the heartache. Maybe after a year of having to give things up over and over again ourselves, we can hear it a little better. We hear the grief and the loss of what was supposed to be, what could have been, the loss of the relationship that went along with all the conventional rules, setting the couple up for good social standing in the community, the loss of never having the perfect wedding, the loss of a perhaps long imagined, imagined dream first pregnancy with his beloved. In fact, Joseph was just beginning what would be a 2020 sort of year. One loss, surprise, need to pivot after another. It begins with a perfect relationship that now seemed unrestorably broken. It went on to include an apocalyptic divine visit, a revelation of what strange, bizarre future God had in store for him. The year continues with a visit from astrologers from the East telling him that he will need to flee the king himself. And the year ends with him and his family, including this newborn as refugees in Egypt. It was a 2020 sort of year for Joseph, a year into which God with us, Emmanuel, bursts on the scene. But I'm afraid I'm getting ahead of myself, or rather Matthew just a bit, because Matthew doesn't start with Jesus or this 2020 of a year Joseph is having. No, Matthew starts at the beginning with a whole genealogy or Genesis as the Greek says, of Jesus, or rather of Joseph, Jesus's adoptive father. Matthew frames Joseph's year of imperfect relationships and real world challenges and the personal fallout of political messes with 14 times three, that is 42, I've been brushing up on my math with homeschooling, 42 generations of imperfect relationships and real world challenges and the personal fallout of political messes. Now that genealogy that I read wasn't just a list of names to bore us or to tempt us to turn to a different worship service streaming on Facebook. No, Matthew gives us this genealogy because he is telling us that Jesus is a product of generations of faithful and not so faithful folk. Jesus is a product of people who played by the rules and those who didn't. Jesus is a product of kings and of poor people like Mary and Joseph. Jesus comes from Jewish and non-Jewish ancestors. Jesus is a product of people who have committed murder and incest and those who stolen birthrights and banished their own children and who have abused political power. Jesus comes from people too who have cried out for justice, done their best to do what is right and fought hard to protect their families. And that list of people tells us all of that. Jesus comes from real people, a little too real sometimes. A community of people who are a little lost and a little found just like you and me. Now from this community and to this community comes Jesus, the one who will save his people, Emmanuel, God with us, Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us comes blessing and changing and challenging our real lives and our real relationships and our real realities. 
He comes into a real world that is messy and imperfect and hard, but at times achingly beautiful. Achingly beautiful like a couple who responds yes to their lives being turned upside down, yes to this surprising child, yes to God with us. The power of saying yes in the midst of so many challenges creates a surprising community, creates a new family centered on God with us, Jesus the Christ. In the midst of so many challenges this year, there have been people and communities who have said yes to their lives being turned upside down even more. And that yes has turned into saying yes to God with us, yes to finding salvation in surprising ways. The focus of our series this Advent is about the power of music to bring hope and love and joy and peace into really challenging situations. Last week, we heard about the power of music at the Terezin concentration camp in World War II. This week, we move a little closer to home and to a story that took place this year. A story that involved not just saying yes to one child, but yes to a whole choir of children. I'll post the link to the article uh, in our Facebook and in the chat later in a little bit. But last March, a tra traveling children's choir from Uganda was touring the US as they had done for the last seven years, singing at churches and schools, raising money for children's centers uh, back home. And they had a two night stop planned at a Presbyterian camp in South Carolina, Camp Fellowship. In the group were 21 children, ages 10 to 15 and 16 adults. And as they arrived at the camp, they didn't quite realize the extent to which the pandemic was shutting everything down. They decided to stay just a few nights longer at the camp to see if things would settle down. But on March 22nd, the president of Uganda shut down travel in and out of the international airport in their country for all non-emergency flights. So the choir was stuck. The executive director of the camp, Kevin Carty, a colleague who I've been at a few conferences with before, Kevin decided that it was the perfect opportunity to say yes to hospitality, yes to relationship, yes to God with us in community. And he invited the choir to stay for as long as they needed. Like many camps, Camp Fellowship had to cancel all of their usual programs and so there was space for the choir to stay. And instead of hunkering down in fear of how they were gonna pay the bills, the camp said yes to an opportunity to welcome the stranger and to even invite Jesus into their midst. A few weeks turned into a few months and the camp community fell into a regular schedule. School, they had traveled with a teacher, Bible study, singing, they were all in their own large bubble so it was safe on site doing chores to maintain their community, playing games and communicating with family back home. They also held virtual concerts to raise funds for their stay. Living in the deep South in South Carolina during a time of racial unrest, the camp also received a few calls from members of the wider community concerned and implying that the group was going to bring the virus there. Carty shared with the Presbyterian Outlook, though, that they had, a they had a responsibility, the camp had a responsibility in witnessing to the fact that we are all God's children and that there's no place for that kind of racial discord. Overall, though, Carty reported that it's been an amazing, it's been amazing the impact the choir has had on us, he said, and the local community. They have remained extremely positive and optimistic during a stressful time. It's incredible how the choir has ministered back to us. And after 251 days, the choir was finally able to leave the camp and return to Uganda on November 23rd. Carty shared that the choir is now an extension of who they are. In a year of heartache and loss, Saying yes to relationship and community and God with us made a difference not only in the lives of the camp community and choir, 
but also the greater community. And I think in many who have heard the story, the angel came to Joseph telling him, don't be afraid to do the hard thing here. When you do what you are called to do, not only you, but so many more will find their salvation. When we act with love and courage, we're not only participating in our own salvation, but joining God with us in the salvation of the world. I wonder in what ways have you acted and loved with courage this year? What opportunities have come your way? What messengers of God have you said yes to? How has God with us saved you in all of that? So I'd invite you to sit with those questions this week. Let us now join together in our litany of belief. In times when humanity disappoints, perhaps even when even our own thoughts and behaviors disappoint, it is an important act to call out, name and claim the consequences of our wrongs. And in times of distress, it is a prophetic act to call out, name and claim our belief that daring to love each other as God loves us is a faithful response. And so we say together, I believe that we have been taught to fear one another. And I believe that we are capable of learning to love. I believe that our society is built on a foundation of oppression of some over others. And I believe that we can speak this truth and move to act in ways that balance this inequity. I believe that we are afraid and I believe that we can lean on each other and God for courage to face anything. We believe even when we are discouraged. We believe that when we are discouraged, raising our voices for justice will bring about more love in the world. Amen. Friends, as we enter this time of stillness, I wanted to share with you that longtime member, Pat Kozaski, passed away this past Friday. And so we extend our love and our sadness and our grief to her family and to those who loved her, including our own community. And we remember too that in life and in death, we belong to God. And so now we have our time of stillness as we hear Pat's son, Jim, sing still, still, still.
Friends, freely we have received and so freely let us give. I'd invite you to send your offering to 3000 East 12 Mile, Warren, Michigan. Or you can go online at firstofwarren.com slash give and maybe Kevin will put that in the comments or the chat for us. There are a few announcements this morning. I'm gonna have Adam go through the slides for me. I can see them. Um, the Christmas community outreach opportunities are churches sponsoring eight families, uh, partnering with Lakeshore Presbyterian Church um, this Christmas. And Kevin hopefully can post that link to the Sign of Genius. I just looked this morning and you all have been amazing. Our Sign of Genius is almost full. There are a few spots left. So if you can go on there, if you'd like to help out, that would be great. Or you could help us with our other project of, of providing Second Mile Center, our partner in Detroit, with $25 Kohl's gift cards. And you can drop those off December 7th, 8th, 10th, or 12th from 10 to 2, or you can call us to set up another drop-off time. So thank you for all who have uh, participated already. Our virtual Christmas pageant, uh, I've been working on filming already. If you would like to take part in, uh, in our virtual Christmas pageant and would like some help recording, you can come to the sanctuary today right after worship. Um, you can log off and hop on over to the sanctuary. Uh, there's a sign up for that, but it'll just take about five minutes. You'll be in and out real quick um, if you'd like to do that. Or you could uh, let me know that you wanna be a part of it and record it on your own and send it back in. Family Feud, next Friday at 7 p.m. on Zoom, we're gonna be playing Christmas Family Feud. And so that link will be in the weekly email. Make sure if you're not already signed up for the weekly email, you can let us know, or you can go on our website to sign up for the weekly email and get the link. I hope um, you'll show up for Family Feud and we can have some fun. Our food drive will be next Saturday as well. You can drop off your gifts then too. Uh, from 10 to 12, we are the little, are we got a little free food pantry that'll be outside our church and that should be up hopefully pretty soon in the next week or two. Um, and we'll be stocking that. So if you have items that would be perfect for a little free food pantry, that would be great. Or bring items and we'll be taking everything to Lakeshore. They have been seeing a huge need over in Lakeshore. So um, help out with the food drive. This Wednesday, uh, we have Bible study at 7 p.m. We're still, we just started the Book of Acts. You can come and join us on Zoom. Again, that link is in the weekly email. And then finally, Facebook, <laughs> our evening prayer service on Facebook on Monday and Wednesday at 8 p.m. June and I have loved, started to play Advent, um, Advent hymns during this time. And so we'd invite you especially to come on during Advent. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because we're given Jesus Christ, the Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because we're given Jesus Christ, the Son, give thanks. Friends, as we move to the Lord's Supper, I'd invite you to place any prayer requests that you have in the comments or in the chat. And Adam, if you could go out and uh, spotlight, that would be great. If you go out of the slides. Friends, in an act of love and courage, Jesus, God with us, came to us to show us what love is. It is this same one who invites us, each of us, to this table. A table where love is made visible, a table where love wins, 
a table where all are welcome. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, O Lord, our God, creator and ruler of the universe. You formed us in your image and set us in this world to love and serve you. When we were captives in slavery, you delivered us to freedom and made covenant to be our sovereign God. When we were stubborn and stiff-necked, you spoke to us through prophets who looked for that day when justice shall triumph and peace shall reign over all the earth. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your son. You sent him into this world to bring freedom to the captives of sin and to establish justice for the oppressed. He came among us as one of us, taking the lot of the poor, sharing human suffering, dying an unjust death. We rejoice that in his dying and rising again, you set before us the sure promise of new life, the certain hope of a heavenly home where we will sit at table with Christ, our host. We give you thanks that on the night of his arrest, Jesus took bread and after giving thanks to you, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after dinner, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant sealed and my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Remembering your gracious acts in Jesus Christ, we take from your creation this bread and this wine and joyfully celebrate his dying and rising as we await the day of his coming. With thanksgiving, we offer our very selves to you to be a living and holy sacrifice dedicated to your service. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, upon these your gifts of bread and wine, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ that we may be one with all who share this feast. United in ministry in every place as this bread is Christ's body for us. Send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. We pray especially this morning for the Kozaski family. Pray for Bob's brother, Dave. We pray for all medical staff who are overworked and risking their lives to help those with COVID. We pray for Pastor Jill. Are there other prayers from Facebook, Kevin? Not seeing any. Okay. Strengthen us, O God, in the power of your spirit to bring good news to the poor and loose the chains that bind. Keep us faithful in your service until Christ comes in final victory, and we shall feast with all your saints in the joy of your eternal realm. We pray all this in Christ's name, the one who taught us to pray together, saying, uh, unmuted if you would like, together our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be, be thy name. Thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day, give us this day our, our daily bread. bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God, the bread of life and the cup of salvation for you. Adam, I'd invite you to post the slides so we can share together in our prayer after communion.
friends, let's join together. God, our hope, we give you thanks that you have given us this foretaste of the justice, righteousness, and peace of your promised new creation. Strengthen us with this heavenly food as we seek to serve your holy realm. Lead us to live in joyful expectation of the coming again in glory of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our Carol of Resistance was written in 1849 by a Massachusetts Unitarian minister, Reverend Edmund Hamilton Sears. One verse has been left out of several hymnals over the years, uh, over the decades since then, but um, in the new hymnal, our hymnal, Glory to God, uh, it restores this powerful verse that refers to the love song of the angels being drowned out by our warring nature. It says, yet with the woes of sin and strife, the world has suffered long. Beneath the angel strain have rolled 2,000 years of wrong. And we at war on earth hear not the love song which they bring. Oh, hush the noise and cease the strife and hear the angels sing. So let us be reminded that we are to listen to the angel chorus and then join it, raising our voices with the message that love, not hate, is the answer. Let us join together. Friends, we wait for justice, but we do not wait to work for change. We wait for restored health, but we do not wait to work to heal. We wait for wholeness, but we do not wait to work at binding brokenness. We wait for peace, but we do not wait to work to eliminate hatred. And so my friends, like bells ringing out the news that God is with us, Emmanuel, we continue to fill the night left and continue to fill the night left by sadness with messages of love. Go into your lives humming the tunes that keep that love alive in you. 
and that spur you on in your work of justice and reconciliation. And I invite, invite you to raise your voices and repeat after me, do not be afraid. Do, do not, not be, afraid. be afraid. Amen. Amen.